Writing prompt. Humans have always been the friendliest and most peaceful species in the galaxy. When one of the most ruthless empires decides to wipe out the pathetic humans and their diplomacy, they discover that humans have something that no one in the galaxy has ever seen. Nuclear weapons. Story by Karis. The humans were always an interesting lot. They were not so taken by war like many others before them, nor did they seek to propagate it. But a brief glimpse back into their wild history showed that they were used to being troublemakers in their own right, constantly warring amongst themselves. After the first contact long ago, they put their differences aside and strived to create a better future for their people. Well, that is what their history books say at least. I wouldn't be surprised if they decided to selectively quash some rather terrible aspects of their history. Each and every one of us has had our own sins. I highly doubted they were the exception. Nonetheless, they were seen as peacemakers upon the galactic stage, a neutral entity in all schemes of conflict, and a helping hand to those who required their assistance. Which is exactly why, when I heard the news, I was shocked by it, but afraid all the same. I remember that day like no other. I was relaxing in my office on the ninth day of the week. My ships had recently left to a neighboring system to trade goods, and the aches and pains of my old age did not seem as prevalent as they used to be. Even though I no longer held office, I still kept up with all the political happenings, mainly because it helped me decide what business avenues to take. The door to my office swung open, and in walked my assistant, a rather nervous look cast upon his pale face. His white fur seemed to stand on its end as he walked in, and his two tails swung about wildly, as if they were fighting each other for dominance. I had not seen him so shaken in quite some time that I couldn't help but be nervous for the news to come. I feared that my ships had been taken by some raiders, but what came next was far worse. Sir, he said, his voice breaking apart. Another war has broken out. Against us? No, not against us, he said. I see, I said, wondering why such a thing was a cause for concern. Our race had not been to war for longer than I had been born and he worked alongside the humans to ensure that no other wars would break out, and if they did, we would assist the beaten and downtrodden. While it was inevitable that war would eventually surface from time to time, for it was an unmistakable fact of life, I could not fret over every little instance, or I would have been consumed by stress long ago. The lesser races would always war against each other, and eventually die out in a few generations. While I used to take more of a compassionate stance towards wars and the like during my time in office, I had become jaded from that experience. And now, if my ships were not directly in the line of fire, that kind of news was no more important to me than the weather. And who is it this time? I asked, not caring to hide the boredom evident in my voice. The Akatan. I felt my heart pause for but a moment, for I knew that whoever they set their eyes upon would no doubt be rubble by the new year. They were a warlike empire, but one far more sophisticated than the bottom-rung junk that cluttered the universe. They were ruthless and efficient, and controlled many aspects of trade in many systems. I had my fair share of dealings with them, so I was well aware of their kind. And who did they declare war on? He paused for a moment. The humans. I jumped up from the desk, causing my assistant to recoil in shock. What? When? Just as 20 minutes ago, he said, as he shuffled back from me. And you didn't tell me sooner? I asked. I could have sent a ship down to at least to rescue some of them. You will let this sit for 20 minutes? Even though I did not want to come under the watchful eye of the Akaton, I still couldn't sit idly by as the humans were obliterated. I could not deny I had a fondness for them, and they were rather efficient workers in my business. Sir... The, th the thing is, he said, the humans didn't need help. Against the Akaten. You cannot be serious. The humans, they had ancient technology, sir, he said. The Akaten have already surrendered. I felt a cold chill run down the hairs upon my back and ring out through my two tails. I heard of ancient technology many times in my youth. Powerful tools of destruction whose secrets had long since been lost to time, but the very idea of the humans of all people having access to those was something I could not comprehend. All in the span of twenty minutes, I said, my breathing raged. Just what did they do? 
What did they have? They uh, obliterated the entire Akaton fleet in mere minutes after war was declared, he said. They have what I believe was called the Sun's Dawn. You've got to be kidding. I slumped back down to my chair, my head spinning from the news. And the council? What is their response to this? Even though I was no longer directly privy to the intimate meetings of the council, I still managed to follow them very closely through a circle of old connections. There is a meeting in a few hours, he said. I imagine it will concern the humans. I let out a feeble laugh. Of all the people to end up in war against, why was it them? We're not at war with them just yet, he said with a weak smile, speaking words that he knew were lies. Give it time. I reached under my desk for a leather-bound flask and poured myself a drink, and as that shimmering black liquid poured out of its confines, its familiar aroma filled my nostrils. I felt a sense of calm overwhelm me for about a single moment, for I believed there and then that there would be a lot more drinking in the days to come. Not the relaxed kind of drinking where one would kick back in their office after a long day, but the relentless turmoil of psychotic drinking fueled by grief. As my kind were considered the closest allies to humans, we would be involved in the conflict to come in some way or another, and the thought of betraying them did not sit too well with me. There was a part of me which naively hoped that things would not escalate, that the conflict would be resolved without further bloodshed, but ancient technology was something the Council could not overlook, no matter who wielded it. Should I send an order to recall your ships? He asked, nervously jittering about on the spot. No need, I said. They should be well out of the danger zone, should things escalate. The only question now is what to do next. No, on second thought, I said, as my sluggish mind finally caught up with me. Recall the fourth ship, the Whisk. If relations with the humans breaks down, it will be too dangerous for them in particular to be out in open space. I let out a weary sigh. It had already been a long day, and I knew for sure that the rest would not come for me too easily. I knew that drinking too much of that aromatic brew would inevitably cause me to drift off to sleep, but I knew it would be a restless one, plagued by the worries at hand. I downed that drink in one fell swoop and put the bottle away, knowing that if I left it out I would lose myself in it. Unless things have changed, am I right in assuming that Eco still has a spot at the upcoming council meeting? Yes, he said, but she won't be necessary. Considering the nature of the event, they are choosing to publicly broadcast it. Is that wise? The humans might not take too kindly to it. The humans are invited, he said. I don't believe they'd be there in person, but they will be there nonetheless. I couldn't help but let out a feeble laugh as I kicked back in my chair. The meeting to come would no doubt be a terrible one, which only served to fill me with immense dread. My assistant stared at me with wide eyes. What are you going to do, sir? There's nothing I can do but sit back and wait for the worst to come. Story by Pantaleon26 I had heard of the human superweapons, but I hadn't heard such claims before. When the Ruthken emissaries boarded my flagship to receive my declaration of battle, they shrieked at me with hatred in their eyes. Through furious chittering they told me of the doom-wrought cannons which would tear my fleet asunder. They perished as easy as the rest. When the old knights came to receive the declaration, they rejoiced for the chance to crush me under the Stormtooth cavalry. Their ambassadors all but invited me to invade their lands. Their promises were as empty as their future. Strangest of all was the castle. When I declared my right of extermination, their people raved like the mad and weak-minded. I eventually found their display was that of a desperate being trying to convince a predator he is not worth the trouble. When the humans came to receive my terms, their words were different. My first commander saw the fear and licked his maw, but I saw something more. The humans who spoke of their weapons did so in hushed tones and reverent whispers. I saw in them a fear deeper than I have ever known. A fear not for my war host. As we departed their lonely system for the last time, I recalled the wisdom of my brood father. He told me the wise hunter never seeks that which his prey fears more than a hunter's teeth, lest he be the hunter no longer. To this cycle I still do not know what the humans fear most, 
but I hope to never know. I pray to the Bright One my people never learn the human secret, so they will never know such terror. It will be the human's burden to carry, for I saw in them enough fear to consume the galaxy. <laughs>